Hi everybody, it's Philip at NYC Music Services, back with another tutorial. This one is about using the Inspector in Sibelius 7. The Inspector is new to version 7 and largely replaces the Properties panel common to Sibelius 6 and earlier. Before we begin, a brief note about our upcoming Sibelius training sessions in New York City, where you'll learn tips like these, and much more, on Friday, July 20th, 2012, at the Juilliard School, from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Please visit our website at Sibelius123.com for complete details about the sessions and for registration information. We hope to see you there. Now the inspector is a way to control the details of your score. To call up the inspector, you can select anything in your score and type Command Shift I, Control Shift I on Windows. To dismiss it, you can click the X in the upper right hand corner or just simply click anywhere in the score. You can also bring up the inspector in the ribbon by clicking the Home tab and then clicking Inspector. And if you find yourself working with the inspector often, like we will in this session, you can pin it by clicking the pin in the upper left hand corner. This way it will display permanently until you choose to unpin it and dismiss it permanently. You'll notice that the inspector is context sensitive, meaning that only the items that can actually be changed will display in the inspector. If nothing is selected, nothing will display in the inspector. And if something that's selected can only be changed a little bit, only a little bit will actually display in the inspector. The general section is a way to control the horizontal and vertical values of something and various other options. This is common to many items in Sibelius, like notes and text. Let's change the X value of this note by using the spin controls. We can also type in a value in spaces. We can also change the stem length in the score and we can also fine tune it using the inspector. And you'll find many things that can be changed in the inspector can also be changed just by selecting, clicking, dragging, or using the ribbon. But the inspector is a way for you to fine tune some of those alterations. If you don't like what you've done, just simply type Command Shift P or Command Shift D to reset the position and design of an item respectively. To change text using the inspector, click on the text. You can change the angle of the text using the spin controls or if you know that something should be 90 degrees for instance just type it in. Line spacing, tracking, baseline and other items can also be changed. Let's get this back to zero and let's change the text frame. Let's change the vertical alignment of the text within the frame. Using the Y alignment, let's change it to the center. However, if you wish to change the horizontal alignment of something within a text frame, you'll actually have to use the ribbon for that. Again, let's reset the design, Command-Shift-D, and position, Command-Shift-P. One thing I do want to do is actually make this text opaque to obscure the bar line behind it. And we can do that using the inspector by clicking Erase Background. You can even set a color. In this case, we'll keep it white. Lines can be changed using the inspector. Simply click on a line to change it. In this case, a hairpin can be changed. You can even change the open aperture. Let's change it to something ridiculous like 5. And even the closed end of the hairpin can be changed for some interesting effects. Let's get this back to its default by typing Command Shift D. Bars can be changed. Let's select a particular bar. And you see here certain items that can be changed, like its ability to show the key signature or not, clefts, brackets, and even the initial bar line. Other properties of bars can be changed using the inspector, such as its ability to break a system, but those can also be changed using the ribbon under the Layout tab, so we won't get into those right now. Let's turn all of those back on. Properties of notes can be changed. Let's force an accidental to display here by using the keypad. Now you notice we can drag an accidental, but if we really want to specify, for instance, that it needs to display, say, half a space to the left of a note, we can type that right in the inspector. 
Same thing goes for ties. You can click and drag using the mouse, but you can also fine-tune those items in the inspector. Again, let's reset the design position of all these items. Tuplets can be changed. You see right now this tuplet is showing as a ratio and a note, but let's just change it to a simple number. We can show the bracket or not. We can even have the bracket extend beyond the last note to the next note after the tuplet. Of course, you can also hide or show something using the inspector, but you can just as easily do that in the ribbon by going to Home, Hide or Show. Finally, playback can be changed significantly using the inspector. Let's change this note to a trill. Let me do this using the lines. Now, say we want this trill to, dis to play diatonically. That's what it's set to do by default. But if we want to change that, click on the trill, uncheck diatonic, and now we say the trill will be a half-step trill. <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of Mission Impossible. We can even have it to play something more like a tremolo, like a minor third tremolo. But for now, let's keep it diatonic. Other changes are possible as well. Something that's also very powerful is the ability to control how many repeats will be read by Sibelius. In this case, the customary one repeat or two plays by default. But you see here that we want this passage to play three times. In this case, what we want to do is actually tell Sibelius to read this repeat twice, not just on the first pass, but on the second pass as well, meaning that it will play a total of three times through. On the third time, it will not read the repeat, so that's unchecked, and that way it will actually go to the next section of music. You see here also the violins are to be tacit the first time. In order to do this, we select everything in the entire passage, and we'll say, don't play on the first pass. Uncheck that box, and that way, everything in the violins will be silent on the first pass, but they will play on the second and third passes. Let's hear that. Please visit our website at www.nycmusicservices.com, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nycmusicservices, and don't forget about those training sessions Friday, July 20th, 2012 at Juilliard in New York City. Thanks for watching.